Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you some tips to help you along on your journey as a portrait artist. I'm going to show you some of my earliest portraits and compare those to some of my current work. I hope that you enjoy this. If you do, please do subscribe here on YouTube. Also consider checking me out over on Patreon for my full catalogue of real-time tutorials. Before I start, I want to say that I was pretty happy with the job I did on all of the paintings that I'm about to show you. With the early work, it's just that I can see now the ways that I could have improved. But hopefully these tips can help you along on that same journey. So with the first two pieces, the main difference here, besides years of practice, is the paper that I'm working on. This piece is on Angre paper. Uh, this is a pastel paper that I used to use in my student days. I started out on this paper. It was the only one really available in art shops with the word pastel on it. Um, this paper is velour paper and I still use that today. It's one of my favourite papers to use. So with this one, what I didn't like was the fact that you can't get much detail on here. It's very easy to fill the paper, uh, doesn't hold many layers of pastel, which when you're trying to create fur, you really want your paper to hold many layers. It's very rough and therefore difficult to get the finer details on. I also started off with a very bad photo reference to work from. I accepted poor quality reference. Um, we're looking down on top of the dog, the lighting was pretty bad, and the resolution of the photograph was really bad. Um, later on with this portrait, I actually went to take the photographs for this portrait. So a very different photo reference to work from, which makes a big difference as well. In this piece though, I just want to mention my mark making here. Of course, poor photo reference doesn't help, but it also has a lot to do with my actual marks with the pastel. You can see the the beginning of my mark here, right down to the end of it, and there's no layers coming down on top of that. You really shouldn't be able to see the root of the hair like this. So my marks look quite jagged and not very realistic, not really uh, following the flow of the dog that well. Whereas over here on this portrait, when you look up close, you can see that I've paid so much more attention to the curve and the flow of the fur and how the fur should really be describing the shape and the posture of the dog underneath. Also, I'll mention on this portrait that I was stuck in a very monochrome palette. So I'm mainly just using blacks, greys and white, perhaps a little bit of brown in around here in this white area, but nothing very adventurous with my colour here. So the whole thing looks a bit flat. It's hard to tell where the light source is coming from. Um, yeah, it just looks quite flat. With this one, well, you'll be able to see that I've used much more colour in Patty's portrait. Uh, using a lot of blues and lilacs within the black areas of the fur and then also using a lot of colour within the lower layers on the white areas. So using tints and shades more and also a broader range of tonal values in my work. So the next one, one of my earliest attempts in pastel. I think I must have been about 13 or 14 years of age when I drew this. And firstly, it's on really rubbish paper. It's uh, like cheap sugar paper or something, something that you maybe use for craft from a scrapbook. Uh, the one good thing it had going for it was it was a nice uh, color to work on for the cat. But I was very pleased at this stage with this one and it was one of the drawings that got me really hooked on soft pastel. And years later, I decided to have a go at the same piece again. By this stage I've discovered velour paper and you can see that I take much, much more time and put a lot more darkness into the fur to create a lot more contrast in the darker areas. In the beginning with this one I'm really quite frightened to try and build up the layers and the paper won't let me anyway. 
but later I learned to take more care and more time and to carefully build up from dark to light. And I also just want to quickly mention my drawing skills which improved in the roughly uh, five or six years that were between these two pieces. You can just see that on this side of the cat's face in my earlier piece, it's gone a little bit askew. It's a difficult three-quarter angle to get and a common area that beginners often have mistakes with is around the muzzle here, the shape of that. You can see later on that I've paid a lot more attention to the angles here and how this eye uh, should warp around this side of the face. So this to this is really just a lot of practice, as well as the introduction of some better materials. So both of these pieces are on velour paper, but the paper alone did not magically sort everything out for my earlier work, as you can see. The velour though does make me more confident to try out backgrounds as most of my earlier work didn't have a background at all. But with this piece in particular, the background has several perspective issues. Again, it was created not from the clearest of photo references. I think from memory I may have had to add this stone in, which I didn't really manage to do very successfully in terms of realistic perspective. And also I'll mention the colour and the mark making on this piece. The colour is pretty flat again. There are browns on the dog and there are greens in the background and the grass. It's the colours I'm expecting to see and not what's really there. Whereas in this piece I've made use of a lot more colour in both the background and the main subjects really looking for the actual colours that I'm seeing reflected on their coats and then also taking some of those blues and making use of them in the foreground, some of the deeper purples being used within the background and it really just helps me tie all of the colours together, create some colour harmony in this piece. I've also realised in my later work that I can blur the background a bit and take the focus off this area and bring it more onto the main subjects. But another problem in the first piece is that I haven't really managed to make this dog look very grounded. I haven't really created enough shadow underneath the dog. Uh, the grass that I've tried to create more in focus around the dog, there's not really enough detail in that. It's not coming up around the paws of the dog enough. And later on, although these pair aren't in long grass, there's much more shadow around them. The colours are just more realistic. As you can see from this, the colours that I'm using in my later work are much more vibrant. In this piece in particular, so many blues and purples and lilacs used to create the dogs. And then, as I mentioned before, just making sure that I use lots of those colours in the rest of the painting too. So here's one of my early paintings on velour compared to one of my more recent paintings on pastel matte paper which I now also use along with velour. Here you can see that in comparison to the earlier papers that I was using this is much better in terms of the textures and now I'm able to get that detail that I wanted in the main features. In general, my drawing and my mark making skills have improved by this stage. My initial sketch is pretty good, but how the fur actually describes the shape of the head could be better. So there are some tricky areas like how the fur goes up the front of a muzzle, how it curves around. All of that's so important in describing the shape of the face. Whereas when we look across at this one, I've paid so much more attention to how the flow of the fur really does go over each structural part of the dog's muzzle and head and it's so important just to create that 3D effect to pay particular attention to how that fur flows over the shape of it. And again with this first piece, it's colour for me, everything looks so flat here. The background is an early attempt to create more than just blank space, but without understanding colour it's difficult. 
In this later red setter, I've brought lots of the colours from my background into the dog, just like I did with the black Labradors, giving the whole piece more colour harmony. And now finally to show you a couple of my people portraits. Back to the pesky Angre paper that I used in the beginning where, as I mentioned, it's hard to get the details and build up layers of pastel. But my main issue back then when I painted people is my overuse of white. So I've got pretty much pure white in the eyeballs. I've got pure white on the teeth. And I've also been using uh, pure white to make some of my highlights on the skin. And I'm really only seeing browns, peaches, pinks, etc. on the skin tones. So just to compare directly with my more recent portrait, the eyeballs here are blue because they're in shadow and now I'm really looking for the colours that I can see and not what I expect to see. And I've also used so much more colour in the skin tones, building up the layers gradually as you can on velour paper and creating much more glowing skin tones. And again, with backgrounds, colour gave me much more confidence to attempt more with my backgrounds. So even though this is still quite a plain and simple background, just understanding colour helped me have a play with this and create some interesting light and shade. And it's just much more interesting, in my opinion, than uh, having a completely plain background, as I used to with all of my work. And don't get me wrong, there is definitely a time to make use of the completely plain background. It can be so effective, but I sure wasn't using it too well back then, so I Definitely, I'm glad that I branched out into experimenting with my backgrounds, trying to add more to my paintings as I progressed. An important thing for any artist in any medium is to always try and be self-critical. Allow yourself the victories, of course, but always look for the ways that you could do it better. It's that determination and curiosity that will make you a great artist. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this. Please do stick around on my YouTube channel, watch some other videos. I'll add some useful links in the description below. Also do subscribe here, show me some support. And if you would like some more videos from me, check out my Patreon channel where you'll get my full catalogue of real-time tutorials and lots more. Thanks again for watching.